What's going on guys and welcome back to the Good Old Boys YouTube channel. Today we're going to be replacing the front wheel bearings in the Hawk 250. First we'll take a quick look at the hours and the miles. So guys, these wheel bearings have needed change for a long time now. They've needed change since we did the top end rebuild. Hopefully as you guys can see here. Yeah, there's a little bit of play in those bearings, isn't there? So it's time to change them out. So the first step here is to remove this axle nut. So your wheel's just gonna fall out of there, kind of like that. Next, we're gonna remove this spacer on the disc brake side. Next, we're gonna pop that seal out with this screwdriver. Simple as that. So guys, this is the front seal. You'll notice that the size is a little bit weird, particularly the ending here. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about this later in the video. Next, we're gonna remove the bearings. You guys have seen this bearing puller set before. It's just got a bunch of these different bearing pullers in there. So we have one bearing removed. As you guys could see, the old fashioned way with a hammer and a punch or hammer and screwdriver works better than the bearing puller sometimes. So now we're gonna remove this center spacer here and punch out this bearing. Well, the inner race came out of there. All right guys, so what we have here is the outer race stuck in this hub. I've tried everything I can to get this out of here. It's being very stubborn. So one of the things you can do is uh, cut this race and break it. So that's what we're gonna do. So hopefully you guys can see this. This is a slit that I cut in the bearing race. What this is gonna allow us to do is break this outer race and it'll come out of there. So I'm switching out chisels here. This is an old junk chisel that I've ground down. We're gonna use this biting edge here to grab the edge of the bearing and hopefully push it out of there. Let's see if that got it. There we go. So that's what we're looking for, guys. It's a sad reality, but when you have a bearing that's stuck, um, that's what you have to do. It's easy going from here. So here's what the rest of our bearing looks like. Yeah, I'd say it's time to change this bearing out. So guys, unfortunately, something comes along with uh, taking bearings out this way. So you mar the bearing seating surface. So the problem with this is that you get little burrs like this and you guys can't even see it. That's how small it is. It's a microscopic burr and that's the point I wanted to make. If you have any microscopic burrs in here, it's gonna prevent you from putting the new bearings in here. All right, so what you wanna do is file these down a little bit or use the Dremel and kind of sand these down. Now, keep in mind, you want to be very easy when you're sanding this stuff down. You don't want to oversize the bearing hole, of course. So now we're going to take care of these burrs. Okay. You guys can see right here a little bit better where the chisel kind of got into the seating surface of the bearing. So again, unfortunate, but it's reality and this is the way it goes sometimes. So again, we're just gonna polish that down and roll with it. Okay, so looks like everything's in good shape now. So it looks like we're good to go as far as this goes. 
Now we're gonna talk about new bearings and seals. All right guys, so I have two new bearings and a new seal. First, we're gonna talk about the seals. Like I said before, this is kind of a weird size. It's a 23 by 37 by seven slash 11, okay? So the Hawk is a metric bike, obviously, so this is measured in millimeters. So what we're gonna do here is measure this. So we have 37, okay? So that's obviously outer diameter. Inner diameter is gonna be 23. And then you have two different widths. The last numbers here are two different widths. So the first width is seven. So that's this part of the seal, seven. And then 11 is going to be the cupped part of the seal here, all right? So not exactly 11, but right about there at 11. So this seal is unfortunately extra special. I looked everywhere, couldn't really find one. If you guys can find one, please drop it in the comment section below. Although I really don't think it's that important to have this exact seal. I did find a seal that will work. So this seal here, you can see is a 23 by 37 by seven. So the only thing you're missing out on is that extra little bit of lip. So this is, you know, seven millimeter seal. And then all you're missing again is the extra lip that this one has to offer all right links in the description box below to this seal all right so now for the bearings i got some 6301 rs bearings now if you guys look at your old bearings the same exact numbers and lettering appears on the old original bearings uh, so this is a specific classification of a bearing um 6301RS is a 37 by 12 by 12 bearing. There will be links to these bearings in the description box below as well. Now let's install them on the bike. First things first guys, we're gonna clean out the area where the bearing presses into. We're gonna take a little bit of brake parts cleaner Clean it out, flip it over to the other side. Take some NICs or grease, smear it around where the bearing presses in. You don't wanna be pressing your bearings in dry. So now I'm gonna take the axle, put it in here. This is gonna help me press this bearing in straight so you can see my hand through the spokes. I'm just gonna hold this straight as I'm pressing this wheel bearing in. And since this bearing is pressing in very hard, what I'm gonna do is get a socket and press on the outer race only. Quick little side note to add in here. To be very frank, the hub on the non-rotor side is undersized. What this means is it's very difficult to get the old bearing out as you guys could see earlier in the video. And you may or may not have been able to tell, but the new bearing was also just a little bit tough to get pressed in and I could also just kind of feel the tolerance was not correct. I really had to hammer on that new bearing even with grease and NICs on it to get it into the hub. So one way you can fix this is to actually sand the hub. Now this comes with all kinds of problems and possible issues so it's not a good option. That's why I'm not doing it on my bike. The reason why is over time, as you press in and remove bearings as they need replaced, the hub is actually gonna get slightly bigger and bigger each time you do this. So that tolerance will become looser and looser to the bearing. So over time, what this means is the bearing will be easier and easier to press in. So again, just an issue that I thought I would add in the video here. If you guys have had experience with this on your bikes, let us know in the comment section below. So we're gonna set our wheel down here and press this in. All 
For this next step, you're gonna need three things here. I've got the bearing, the center spacer, and the axle. So first, I'm gonna put the bearing on the axle. Then I'm gonna put the center spacer on the axle. Slide that all through the bearing on the other side. So again, the center axle just centers the bearing so it presses in evenly. Okay, we're gonna grab our socket and hammer, press this bearing in. Here again, another side note on a machining issue. There's a lip on the inside of the hub on the Hawk 250. What this lip does is stops the bearing from going too far into the hub. So this lip, uh, say it's supposed to be this wide, it's like this wide. So obviously this is an exaggeration, but you guys get what I'm trying to say. The point is you can press the bearings in too far. The problem with this is when you press the bearings in too far, they pinch that center spacer really tight. And what happens is your bearings get into a bind. So you should be able to stick your finger in the bearing and rotate it freely. If it won't rotate, then your bearings are in a bind. So you don't want this. So in other words, just don't press your bearings in too far. If you have pressed the bearings in too far, you need to slightly pull them out with a bearing puller or some other means. And now it's time to install the front seal. So now it's time to put the seal in. Of course, you want to put a generous amount of grease on the seal. And as we know, the seal only goes on the disc brake side. The other side does not have any seal other than the seal in the bearing itself. But it doesn't hurt to put a little bit of grease here as well. So next you wanna go ahead and clean up this spacer, which I've already done. We're gonna take and put some grease on the spacer itself. Remember, there's no such thing as too much grease. Now we're gonna pop that in the new seal. It's got a nice tight fit, which is exactly what we want. Before we put the wheel back on the bike, we wanna go ahead and clean up this rotor. A little bit of brake parts cleaner. Now it's time to put this thing back on the bike. In some cases, it may help to lower your bike a little bit. Once everything is close to being lined up, get your axle bolt started. You wanna lift your front wheel a little bit. Shove that axle through there. Sometimes you have to wiggle things around a little bit. So you have two things to worry about here. Number one, make sure your spacer is on there. Number two, make sure the speedometer unit is lined up correctly. Now we'll go ahead and put the axle nut on and tighten it down. Just get it nice and snug. You don't want that front wheel falling off. Now you guys can hopefully see we don't have any play anymore. Perfect. Well guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out that description box below for other videos like this. And we'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace. <laughs>